Here's Artorius SQ-80V. It's their emulation of Ensonic's original 1987 digital hybrid synth, which had digital oscillators and a single 24 dB low-pass filter. I've been playing this for a few days now and I've been really impressed by it, mainly as it's a nice unique synth that's got some unusual and notable features, which are, firstly, the sound. There's so much digital noise aliasing and general grittiness in this, which I love, and you won't even need headphones to hear it. Just listen to the noise and dirt in this. And then there's the implementation of the waveforms in the synth engine in that the waveforms aren't the same across the range of the keyboard. The waveforms change just as a sound changes with pitch. And as I play up and down here, you can see that square and that pulse are both changing. And then sticking with the oscillators, some of the waves are designed as transients. Just like the D50 and its LA synthesis, they only play a portion of the sound at the very start of a note. So holding the note on, we just get a single transient. And then there's wave shaping capabilities using the trans wave, which sort of is a bit like PWM, but squishes the wave. If you look at this, as we move the slider, We're changing the wave shape and all the harmonics, obviously. And next up on the unique features, we've got the envelopes. We've got in Sonic's own envelopes here, the SQ80 envelopes. And then we've got a multi-segment and a DADSR. And looking at the SQ80, we've got much more control than a simple ADSR. You can see down here, we've got different levels and times. It's a bit more like the Alpha Junos, but we've got so much more control over various aspects of it different responses to different velocities and different decays depending on where you are on the keyboard. And with this multi-segment envelope, we've got really fine control over what you can do. We can add segments and change the envelope curves. And as it's loopable, it's effectively a really complex LFO. And then we've got this modulation mixer here that can modify the controls coming from two different modulation sources. So like LFO1 and LFO2. And then we can do various functions with them to get all sorts of crazy modulation. Add to that the effects and a great interface. You've got yourself a really nice little package. So let's take a quick look at the interface. And we'll look at the synthesis page so you know what I'm talking about while I'm going through the synth engine. And this is a little like a modular style interface in a way, in that we've got various patch points and all destinations that we can see here on these sort of little mini potentiometers, these sort of semicircles. Got two here, two here. We've got two on the resonance, two on the frequency. We've got a couple on the LFO, a couple on the pan, a couple on the amp. So if we click on this, we can decide what the modulation source is. That's LFO one there. Let's have envelope two here, and that can be positive or negative. So you can imagine this a bit like a modular system being covered in patch cables with a cable from LFO one going to DCA one, a cable from envelope two going to DCA one, and everything here is color coordinated. So the LFO is yellow, the envelopes are orange, the mixer is green, it's over there. Let's put it on the frequency. Turn that up, there we go. And we get this bar indicating the modulation range. And this little blue square dot, and that's moving more as I turn the amount up. And then less as I turn the amount down. That's the same up here on the DCA. So instantly you can see on this interface what everything is doing. It's really clever. And then we've got this hardware page. And most of this is repeating stuff that we've got on the synthesis page. All these bits in the middle are, but we can see we've also got a pitch bend and the mod wheel. So as I move that, we can see the mod wheel changing and the pitch bend changing. And that's really useful if you're not sure what your MIDI is doing. But mainly 
it just looks really cool sitting underneath this little three and a half inch 1980s floppy drive. We do have the ARP on here that you saw me use earlier. This is the only place we can access the ARP from. And of course, this is the page that sells the synth. The pictures of the synth engine itself don't really do it justice. It could be a generic synth. So the lovely headline page is really important. It doesn't actually replicate the original really closely either. We've got waveforms rather than those little bits of 1980s text. And we don't have those buttons on the right hand side for accessing parameters or the data slider knob. They're both completely redundant on this interface. So I think this is designed really well to reflect what it is, a modern take on a classic. And then we've got the effects page. We've got four different effects and we can pick one of 15 algorithms and you can have the same algorithm on all of them if you want. We've also got two different routings. We've got parallel or series. Effect one and two go to one bus and effect three and four go to another and then are summed at the output or they can come just one after the other. And then on the bottom right, we've got the macros and they change with every patch. And we can see here that they're purple. So they match the key step, which is nice. And then if we go to the settings, we can see we've got MPE support. And going into the MIDI settings, just like the macros, it looks like everything here is mapped to the same CCs as the default settings on the key step we've got. Again, a nice little touch. But you can change any of these and you can load in different controllers. In fact, here we've got a load of the various Artoria ones. And you can save whatever you want as well for your different controllers. Then moving over to the macros, like we've just seen, there's the brightness and the timbre. Let's add something to the brightness. So click learn, go to the high pass frequency on effect two and wiggle this. High pass frequency on effect two is being wiggled as well as the filter frequency. But my computer is having trouble keeping up here because it's currently recording this on high def on a huge 4K screen. So this is on a 4K screen and this is as large as it'll go, but on a normal screen, it completely swamps it. It's about four times the size of my laptop screen, but it's a really nice interface. So back into the settings, we've got the tutorials, which are well worth following. Although if you watch all of this, they won't be as useful to you as they were to me. Okay, that's how it works. A very, very quick whistle stop overview. Let's start by taking a look at the synth engine. Let's start with the oscillators as usual. We've got three almost identical oscillators. I say almost identical, as oscillator one and two are linked with the sync and with this amplitude modulation on oscillator two as well. So let's load the default patch again. <laughs> Listen to that aliasing. If you want pure, rich, smooth, analog tones, this isn't the synth for you. But if you want a little bit of grit, this most certainly is. Again, as you can see, even the sawtooth is changing. As we go up and down the keyboard. So let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got four different banks of waveforms. We've got SQ80 waveforms. Then we've got these trans waves and hidden waves from the ESQ1 and the ESQ80. So we've got quite a lot to look at and I'm not gonna go through them all, obviously. And as I showed earlier, some of them will play continuously, just like any oscillator. And then others are like transients. Hold it as long as I want, it just plays a little pulse. But if we go to the trans waves and play the same wave. It's looping. If we go higher up, it'll play quickly. So what are these trans waves? Almost identical to the SQ80 waveforms. If we look at these, names are the same. Then the trans waves, all the names are the same. I've not got a list, but I'm assuming they are exactly the same. 
So we've got Alien and Breath. Let's go down here. Alien, Breath and Voice 3. It's the same. Except for when we get to the bottom on the SQ81s, we end with the drums. Quite handy. <laughs> Having a different waveforms for different sounds. But when we come to the trans waves, we've got a lot of these ones below the drums with an X after them. And these are different to the waves above without the X, which I showed earlier. Let's just find one. And we can see that wave sort of being squished, as I said. And that's different to the ones at the X at the end because they're like full wave tables. And of course, this can be modulated. Let's modulate that with LFO1. And just like normal wavetables, these don't change over the range of the keyboard. So the others, the hidden waves, we've got literally hundreds of these, 222 on the SQ1, and 179 for the SQ80. Some are really harmonic, but really good for effects. These are really quite cool. Let's stick that on an arpeggiator. Sorry, just couldn't resist doing that. Anyway, back onto the oscillators. We can modulate the level of them with these two input sources on the right, and we can modulate the tuning with these on the left. We've got an octave switch here. Not gonna hear much with that one, are we? Let's put a sawtooth back on. Then we've got fine tune. So they all do that, but oscillator two also has the ability to sync to oscillator one. Let's turn that on. And modulate that with an LFO. Really dirty again, that isn't it? All sorts of grittiness going on in that, isn't there? And then we've got AM as well. Turn the sync off. <laughs> Let's take the modulation off as well. Just listening to Oscillator 2 there. We've also got the copy function. So we can copy one to any of the others. And I think that's about it. I think I've covered the oscillators there. So let's move on to the filter. The filter is a really simple affair. It's just a straight up 24 dB low pass filter. It was analog on the original synth. And let's maybe pull up the frequency analysis on this as well. Okay. In fact, let's play something high up just so that you can see all that aliasing. 
So all these little intermittent frequencies are the intermediate frequencies down here. Shouldn't really exist at all. <laughs> and that's that little tone you can hear in the signal. Look at all the little bad boys there. And you can see the frequency response is actually changing with the different sawtooths up and down the up and down the keyboard. I think these are 8-bit waveforms actually, but don't quote me on that. Okay, back to the filter. Let's bring the resonance up. A lot of little bits in there, aren't there? I'm just seeing if I can take this down really low, the, the resonance, but I can't. On something like the Monopoly or the Mini Moog, you get these really, really bassy rumbles between 20 and 30 hertz, but not getting any of that here. Let's whack the resonance onto full. And you can see that resonant peak there. Let's take it down an octave or two. There we go, a 4K. That's as loud as it'll go. So you're not getting all that analog juiciness and squelchness out of this. It was analog originally, but this is obviously digital. But it reminds me of the Juno 2, the Alpha Junos. Where the resonance is just a little bit lacklustre. Doesn't quite boost as high as you might like. And we've got two inputs to modulate the frequency and the resonance. Plus we've got key tracking as well. And although it's hard to hear it, we can see the resonant peaks moving as we play up and down the keyboard. So the filters are pretty simple affair compared to Lots of more modern synths, but it is what it is. It was 1987. So let's move down then to the envelopes. We've got four envelopes, and the fourth is hardwired to the amplitude. And as I showed on the intro, we've got three different types. We've got the SQ80, a multi-segment, and the delay ADSR, DADSR. So let's take a look at the SQ80 first, and let's modulate DCA1 pitch. So we've got bipolar, it's going lower. And again up here, if we look at oscillator one, we can see this little blue line showing exactly what the modulation is doing. Sounds like sooty. S means sustain. So we've got a time and then a level. So unlike on an ADSR, where the level is set only by the by the destination, this can be indently set here as well. We can change the attack time with velocity. So the harder you hit it, the shorter the attack time. And we can see down here the velocity so the last one was loud or hard. Let's hit it low. Again. I'm looking at the modulation sources in the bottom right, by the way. So there's a nice little thing. And the decay can change depending on where you are on the keyboard. So high up, I'm going fast. 
and low down. We're going slowly. We can change the velocity curve from exponential to linear and the velocity level as well. So you get more modulation, the harder you hit it. And again, that's reflected up here. In the top left, on the modulation arc, or whatever you call it. Hit it softly, no modulation. Hit it hard, lots of modulation. So there's quite a lot in that SQ80 envelope. And we can copy that to envelope 2304, as you can with the oscillators. That wasn't actually what I wanted to do. I wanted to show the MSEG envelope. We can change the shape of the curves. And we just click on the envelope to add new segments. If we double click on one, it becomes a sustain point. Let's just go to envelope four and increase the release. And then we can loop that. Change the loop point. Let's just take the release back down as well. This is on Hertz, so it's on independent rate. Or we can sync it. You can get some really lovely syncopated loops like that. So, I think I said earlier, that's basically another LFO, isn't it? But a really complex one. And there's a few presets there as well to get us started. If look at the top left. Unipolar. Bipolar. Time dependent can be on the key or on the velocity. Let's make it quicker. The higher up the keyboard you are, let's slow it down first, shall we? That's really low down, and then really high up. <laughs> Super quick. And we can modulate the amplitude as well. So loads of nice things in there. We've also got this full cycle, and that means that once you've pressed the key, it will play the full cycle. It's probably easy to show that on the amplitude. That's different to just the release because that's still playing a decay phase. Oh, <laughs> it will always play right to the very end of the envelope. And then finally, we've got the D ADSR. So this is basically just an ADSR with delay as well. And the delay just waits before anything happens. Let's make it a bit shorter. Whoa, listen to all those little digital bits and bobs in that. Don't know if all this is replicating the original exactly, but it sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Just seems to be capturing something, doesn't it? It's definitely not a mini moog. <laughs> Gotta love all that. Okay, let's move on to the LFOs. We've got three LFOs. And we know what's going to happen here, don't we? We've got six different waves. Triangle, square, noise, sine, and sawtooth. So sawtooth ramps down. We've got the amount here as well. So we can not only just set the amount in the destination, we can change the amount down here. And if we look at that little blue line on the top left, it's hardly moving. increase that 
Blue lines move in more. And again, that's free running at the minute. Or we can sink it. We can also modulate that with something else. Let's modulate it with the mod wheel. We've got reset mode, so it'll reset every time you hit a key. Let's take that off. No reset. Reset on. Human just adds little inaccuracies. Can't really hear them here though. And poly mode. Just turn it down a bit. That's poly mode off. Poly mode gives an independent LFO pair voice. So they were not in poly mode and they all sort of come together. The LFO is a single LFO acting on all voices. Do that in poly mode. Got an LFO pair voice. This delay feature is also quite nice. Creates sort of little steps. I was expecting that just to wait or be like a really smooth transition. A little bit of older 80s quantizing going on there, that's great. The initial level is the initial level, not the um, initial phase. And if we look at the mixer, you can see what's going on. If we put it at zero, it starts at the bottom. If we put it at halfway, the ramp will start at halfway up the, the square. If we put it on nearly full, it'll start almost at the top. So some nice little things in there, in those LFOs, that you don't get anywhere else. I've not seen that before. That's really cool. That's something I should really mention in the unique features at the start. Okay, over to this mixer, and we all know what this is going to do, don't we? Let's blend two modulation sources. Let's put LFO1 and LFO2 in. And we can do various things with these. Let's put one onto a pulse. And we can see what's happening in this little window. Turn the amount up. And once again, let's modulate pitch. So the mod mixer, it's gone green. But because you can sync everything together, you can get really nice repeatable patterns. So again, all sorts of things in there, just to sit around and play with and find something nice. Down in the bottom right, we've got all the physical controls we saw earlier, like the mod wheel, velocity, you've seen that, got pedal and pressure. And these are all modulation sources. In the bottom left, we've got voice assign modes, got mono. Last no priority. I don't know if you can change it. I've not seen any way you can yet. Let's just put a little bit of release on that. Got reassign mode. And that changes the voice allocation. And Profit 5 does it one way, Profit 6 does it another way. On this, we've got both options.
which is nice. Got unison detune. Down here, we've got the number of voices. On unison, we've got two. Let's put it onto eight. On the top right, we've got the amplifier with a couple of patch points and the same with the pan as well. So I think about just about covers the main parts of the synth engine. So then we've got the effects. I don't really want to go on about the effects too much. We can have a play with these yourself, all quite obvious. We've got 15 different effect types, all very nice. You know, Artoria have been doing this for quite a while now. Let's have a listen to that chorus, shall we? Juno style chorus. Yeah, sounds good. Or maybe put a huge reverb on. More decay. Take that off for a second. Oh, turn it on. Really nice quality to all these. And you'll notice as well, we've got patch points for these. So these are modulatable as well, which is great. That's just a little patch I was playing with earlier to show the difference between the parallel and the series routing. So yeah, I think that brings me to the end of it. Um, it's took me longer to go through this than I, uh, I anticipated, but it's really quite simple. It's really quite intuitive. I really think the interface is really great. And I love all those little digital artifacts. That stepping on that LFO was brilliant, wasn't it? But there's some really nice little things in this that 10, 15, 20 years ago, we'd have absolutely hated. It would have sound like an old rubbish digital synth, you know, back from the 80s. But now we're coming back around to like some of this stuff, aren't we? Which is why there's so many digital synths around at the minute. So I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. And don't forget, I've got another video showing how to get about 3,000 extra patches for this for free. So do check that out. And do ring the bell so you don't miss any of my other videos. And also maybe join me on my Patreon page where we've got hours and hours of tutorials and patches and various other bits and bobs and resources. And also, it's just really nice for people to support the channel. And if you're in the States, Perfect Circuit Audio will give you free shipping on stuff if you use my link below. Now I'll get a little tip. So that would be nice as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.